let us friends understand with the help of two more examples as to what is ethics and what is professional uh, standards and what is good governance who can we understand it from we can understand from the legends and who are these legends these legends are ghansyam das ibirla these legends are jadi tata these legends are jamshed ji tata these legends are mr bk birla long long ago ghansyam das birla ji wrote a letter to his son bk birla and i'm going to share that letter with you and you will understand as to what is the driver of these visionaries what drives these legendary legendaries personality legendary personalities what is their thought process why jamshed ji tata becomes a tata empire why ghansyam das birla becomes a huge birla empire and that is because of their thought process and remember their thought process is simply driven by ethics their thought process is simply driven by one single urge and that one single urge is to create value to make this world a better place to live i am going to share with you friends uh, the letter that was written by shri ghansyam das birla to his son bk birla and uh, listen to me very carefully listen to me very very carefully because this will give you an idea as to how the leaders the true leaders think this will give you an idea as to why as to how the true businessmen think and this is the letter it goes like this where uh, uh, the where ghansyam das birla ji is writing to his son bk birla and this letter friends is available in the public domain and uh, Uh, you can always google it uh, but here to discuss this topic of ethics i am sharing it with you so he writes dear basant i advise you to read this letter when you become an adult and are older i am writing from my experience to be born as a human being in this world is a rare opportunity this is true one who abuses one's body having obtained the human form is only an animal you have received a lot of wealth and good resources if these are used to serve others and i'm repeating if these are used to serve others then of course such resources will become useful if not they will become a devil's weapon pay heed to this principle pay heed to this principle number 1 never use wealth for luxury and cheap pleasure ravana had indulged in luxury and promiscuity king janaka had rendered service wealth is never eternal therefore so long as it it lasts use it for serving others and i'm repeating use it for serving others use the least possible amount for yourself the rest you should spend to alleviate the sorrows of suffering ones number 2 wealth is power intoxicated by such power one may act unjustly towards another you must be careful about this number 3 he writes further do leave this advice for your children now please remember not only he is advising his own son not only ghansyam das birla ji is advising his son his son bk birla but he is also advising him do leave this advice for your children if they live if they live if they lead a life of comfort and luxury then they would be committing sin and destroying our business activities you must not bequeath wealth to such spoilt brats before it can reach them distribute it to poor 
you have to realize that you are the trustee of such wealth and we brothers have generated this wealth in the hope that you will put it to good uses. He writes further, remember always that you hold wealth on behalf of the common citizens and that is what everyone has to understand. Everyone has to understand. Every businessman has to understand. Every professional has to understand what Ghansyam Das Birla Ji is writing to his son Shri B.K. Birla. And I'm repeating it once again. Remember always that you hold wealth on behalf of common citizens. You cannot use it for your selfish ends. Never forget God. He gives right understanding. Never forget God. He gives right understanding. Keep your senses under control. Otherwise, they will drown you. Physical exercise is must and be done regularly. And finally, he says, control your consumption of food. Those who eat to please the palate die early and cannot work enough. Ghansham Das Birla. Now friends, tell me, what can be a better way, what can be a better approach to understand as to what is ethics? What can be a better way to understand as to what drives the, the true businessmen, the true leaders and the true industrialists and that is ethics and that is governance and this is what is ethics and this is what is governance. Let me give you friends another example and this example is from the life of Jamshedji Tata. There is a book that I was reading uh, on the Tata Empire and this book is written by R.M. Lala and uh, in the, the foreword for this book is written by none other than G.R.D. Tata himself. And G.R.D. Tata in this book is writing about Jamshedji and I'm reading it out for you as to what he is writing about Jamshedji. And remember, that is what you and I have to remember. If you and I have to become like Jamshedji, like Ghansham Das Ji Birla, what you and I need to do? You and I need to just simply change our thinking and make it in line as to how these legends, uh, people, legendary personalities think and that is what we need to do. G.R.D. Tata writes about Jamshedji Tata in this book. And he says, Having made a substantial fortune from trading and textile industry, Jamshedji could have rested on his laurels or concentrated on making more money. Instead, instead, he saw that under the exploitation of colonial rule, his country was being bypassed by the industrial revolution which was rapidly transforming Europe and America. Therefore, he decided almost single-handed to launch India on the path of modern science and industry and to risk his fortune in the process. Friends, this is, that is why Jamshedji envisioned of steel plant in India. Of course, he could not see the steel plant uh, in his own life, but rest is, at this say, is all history and we know as to how the Tata Empire is today. So Tata Empire today is so huge in size that and it is growing at such a rapid pace and that is primarily because they have followed the eth ethics and they have followed the business ethics and corporate governance. And this is another example friends I thought that I would share with you as to how what is corporate governance and what is professional standards, what are the ethics and what we need to do. So with this understanding friends, uh, let me ask you a question. And this is the question that I would like all of you to ponder over. And the question is, what kind of society we will have if no one follows ethics and good governance practices? Just imagine, just imagine, everyone in this country, or everyone on this earth is a crooked person. Everyone on this earth is dishonest. Everyone, of, on, everyone on this earth is following no ethics you can imagine what kind of world it is going to be. What kind of world we will, leave, we will be leaving behind for next generation with that. We all want this world to become heaven. 
we all want this world to become a better place to live but remember how will that happen and that can happen only when everyone on this earth follows ethics that can happen only one on this earth follows professional standards that can happen only when everyone on this earth is being driven by one single urge and that is to make this world a better place to live create value so as to make this world a better place to live